Hi everyone, welcome back. In the last video, we started creating this gauge, and in this one, we're going to finish styling it, add it to the dashboard, and we're also going to create our another gauge for comparison. Let's start with the comparison gauge though, and then we'll do the styling at the end. So what we're doing in this gauge is we're comparing the player's value for the testing event that we select with the team best value in the event that we select. And we're going to create another gauge that represents this exact same information, more or less, except instead of the player value, you're going to, you're going to decide whether you want to display what you want to display. Do you want to display the position best? Do you want to display uh, the team average, the position average, uh, the player's all-time average? I, I don't know what it's going to be. For me, I want to compare the position average so that I can quickly see how the player compares with the team best and how the position average compares with the team best. So I kind of can see two, two different things. I can see, one, how the position relates to the team, and number two, how the player relates to the position, and also how the player relates to the team. But it gives me a couple of different viewpoints within a couple of gauges, and I'm actually not a huge gauge fan. It doesn't provide very much information for the amount of space it takes up, but I think that they look cool, and a lot of people um, asked me to do gauges, so that's where a lot of this is coming from. But let's uh, let's move on here. So what I'm realizing is I didn't lock in some cells that I probably should have here, um, and because we're going to copy and paste this stuff down, let me let's do that quickly. Another thing I, I don't talk about this much. I always put dollar signs manually um, before before my locking of stuff, and that's okay. Uh, my computer it's really hard to reach. My computer requires holding down the function key and clicking F4 to, to automatically lock things in. And I think it's a valuable shortcut to know. Uh, that's why I wanted to bring it up. But for me, it's just too difficult to do. It's almost easier to do it manually. So, But if you hold that, for me, if I hold down function and I click F4, for you it might just be F4. But if you're clicked around these cells or around the stuff that you want to lock. I'm holding down function key and I'm clicking F4. It'll automatically lock both, and then if you click it again, it'll lock one, and then lock the other, and then unlock. So I'll do that again. It just kind of cycles through locking. Um, I mean, it's difficult to reach, so I just do the dollar signs manually. Uh, we're going to lock in V5 there. We're going to lock in column A here, and A4 here, and H to H, and A13. We're going to lock in everything with dollar signs. Click enter. And now we can copy all this stuff that we have and we'll paste it beneath. And the only exchange that we're making here, uh, or that I'm making, I'm going to call this position average. Okay. Like I said, I want to compare this player to the position average. To uh, make this exchange, Right now, we're getting, we're taking the average of a value for when the player is equal to the player that we select and the event is equal to the event that we select. But what I want to exchange now is instead of the player being equal to the player that we select, I want the position, which is in testing data C to C. And it's important that when you get this stuff, that all of this, if you're going to follow along, all of this, columns A through H, they remain complete consistent and they stay exactly the same as, as they are um, for the duration of this so that unless you understand what you're doing then then it's fine to change them around but I'm taking column C if you move the position column to G or added some columns or whatever you did you're gonna want to get the column that you want to of the cohort that you want to compare for me it's position so that's C and we'll change testing data A to A to be testing data C to C and instead of that being equal to A4, which is the player's name, we want it to be equal to A7, which is the position of the player. Let's change A4 to A7 and click Enter. And now that's the position average. And we can create another gauge by selecting this stuff. Insert chart. Actually, no, never mind. We're not going to insert the chart now. Let's style this. And then we'll copy it and we'll replace the data. That'll be easier. So how am I going to style this? 
I'm going to edit the chart. And donut is fine. Let's go to customize. I want it there to be a transparent background, so I'll go to chart type. Make the background color none. I don't want there to, there to be a border on the chart, so I'm going to remove the border. I also want to make this as small this box as small as possible. So there we go. Now now the chart is kind of contained in this small box. And I'm going to change the colors. So the color here of this blue, I want to be, I don't know, the gold. And the color of this red, I want to be uh, light gray. So it'll look like the gauge is not filled up. And the last thing that I want to do is I want to make the donut slices thinner. So this donut hole here, it says 50%. Uh, was it 25%? Oh, that makes them thicker. Let's make it 75%. Sorry if you can't see this very well. I know I made the background transparent and such. And that looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the three dots and we can go to copy chart. Let's go to our testing dashboard. I'm going to hold down control and click V to paste the chart in here. Here's my chart. Okay, great. So I have one chart in here. And I'll show you what I'm going to do what I'm going to do next uh, with these charts, but there's one. And now we're going to go and get our other chart, which we need, still need to create. So let's go to our chart data and let's copy this chart again and paste it right here. So now we have two charts. One is the player chart, one is going to be the team chart. In the team chart, or the position average chart, I'm sorry, position average chart, we can edit this chart. Uh, the label is fine because we're not going to use them at all. But the, for the values, we're going to select data range. Instead of V8 to V9, which are these two cells, the player value and the remaining value, the player value being the, the gold and the remaining being the gray, we want this to be the position average and the position remaining. And click OK. And now if we look at this chart, it should fill up more than the player chart, and it does. And I'm just going to change the color from gold to this uh, dark gray or almost black color. And copy this chart now. Go to our testing dashboard and paste this chart in here. Now we have two charts, and I'll make it smaller just like the other one. I like how Google Sheets has like alignment things in it. It's it's pretty cool. But now now we have two charts. And the rest of this video we're pretty much going to style this and, and and make it look uh pretty cool. But before I style these, the first thing that so I don't like having these <laughs> these columns, uh, these things dynamic um for my profile. I'm I'm very you're going to notice I'm very particular about some things. Um, and this number one, these drop down arrows to take up space, and also I'm tied to what I want to name them in my table, um, which is not the case here. I just want this to say team and jersey number and age. And the reason why I want them to say that is because I want all columns to be the exact same width so that when I merge cells and do some things, uh, it looks nice and even. You'll notice that column C is bigger than column D, E, F. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to my profiles area and I'm going to change the the wording in here. I'm going to just going to change this to team, age, jersey, jersey number and see if that helps me out. So I'm going to go to my team dashboard now. Uh let's just change this to this is age. This was jersey number and this was team. Perfect. And now I'm going to make this the same size as the others, which is 100. I don't know. Ah, we got there. Great. I can still see everything. Now everything's the same size. And now what I can do, or what now I can, what I can feel confident in doing, is merging cells. So let's say that we want these gauges to be these sizes. What I might decide to do is on the top here, Let's just say right here, I'm going to merge these two cells, and I'm going to merge these two cells, and I want these two cells to say what each of these gauges are. And then underneath the gauges, in the middle of the gauge, I want there to be a number. 
So I'm just going to merge these cells for now and copy and paste that over so that these cells are merged. Looks like I'm going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rows by two columns. And actually what I should do is make all of these rows, I'm going to resize them to size 25. So they're all a little bit, a little bit thicker. I, I like them that way. And I'll align my gauges inside these white boxes. And now within these white boxes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them equal to the values that the gauges are. So for this team gauge, we'll go, or the position average gauge, gauge we'll go equals, go to our chart data, and let me move this, and have it be equal to the position average value right here. And let's move that into the center and vertically align it and remove a bunch of decimal points. And this is also a little bit why it's in, why it's kind of important um, that you know what's going in these cells is this number. So I'm going to bold this number and I'm going to make it large. Let's make it 20. Well, let's make it even bigger. Make it 36. Um, if you you'll want to know whether you want decimal points and how many you want. For example, if this was sprint times. Change the 10 meter sprint. Now it just has two, and not uh, the decimals that you need to contextualize this number. So for me, I know that I wanted to display a score, um, and the number can look like that. And I'll make the value of the number that uh, dark gray color, similar to the gauge. And I'm gonna do the same thing. Uh, actually, what I'm gonna do is let's copy what's in this white, what we did here in the merge cells behind the gauge and paste them in this cell here just so the formatting is consistent and we can go equals in this white box where our player value should be go to our chart data and select the player value and click enter now we have our player value there and i'll change the text color to gold for that value we can move the gauge and align it in the center all right this is looking a little bit better and remember, we merge these two things up here to define what these are in this cell, cell 14, or uh, cell A14 here. I'm just going to go equals and select the player name. Click enter, and I'll put that, I'll center align it, vertically align it, bold it, and also make it gold. Again, so everything kind of aligns. So this, that's that person's value. And now this, for this cell, We'll go equals, and I'm going to select the position because this is a position average, ampersand, quote, space, average, end quote. And if we click enter, and bold, center align, vertically align, and again, we'll make that font um, that dark gray. Now we can quickly see that, okay, this value is for this person, and this value is for whatever the position of the person is, plus average, so it's the forward average. If we choose someone else, I don't know what, what position these people are. All right, now we have the wing average, and we have the value for that person for overall score. And I guess the last thing, now that I think about it a little bit more, maybe I want to move all this stuff up a little, a little bit, and the gauges up a little bit. And make this overall score maybe like a little light gray background so that it's a little bit more obvious that we can select it and change it let's see what this looks like because ultimately we'll look at it without grid lines so we'll go to view take out the grid lines here okay that looks pretty good so far now there's some stuff there are some charts that i want to go down here and there's also some more information that i want to go down here Essentially, what I want to do is I want to identify this athlete's their biggest strength and their biggest weakness uh, based on our scoring categories that we defined. And if you don't have scoring categories, you might be able to do it uh, with just metrics. And then I also want to display a couple of charts here that we interact with that shows the player relative to um, in context, essentially relative to a position or to a team and, and where they fit. So we're going to go through those charts next, and then in the end, we'll go through um, the finding the biggest strength and big, biggest weakness stuff. 
So I hope that this video was helpful. Uh, if it was, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, like it, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. That would help me out a lot. And great work so far. I know it's not easy. Uh, you're crushing it. And I'm excited to see you in the next video.